With the current controversy, there's a lot that comes under fire. The police, statues, and school books. Yep. In this video, we're gonna dive into the school books that are used for the subject of history in the Netherlands. Are they racist? Are they denying the history of slavery? Let's find out. Now earlier I made a likewise video in which I discussed Dutch school books for the subject of history dealing with slavery. Now the books I elaborated on in that video were mostly older books. In this video we're going to elaborate on two methods that are today used in schools. These are Spreek het Verleden and Phoenix. What do these books teach us about the dark history of the Netherlands and especially when it comes down to the slave trade as well as the Dutch Golden Age. The Dutch shipped over half a million African enslaved people across the ocean. They had to work on plantations and suffered many, many, many hardships. What do Dutch school books tell pupils about this? About the numbers, the conditions and furthermore, what do the school books teach us about the Dutch Golden Age? A term which is inappropriate to some because caused much suffering for many people. And that's not the only thing because to some we're not allowed to use the word slave any longer. It's inappropriate. Why? Well, because these people were enslaved. So in the Dutch language you have to say tot slaaf gemaakte mensen instead of slaven. Because using the word slave is disrespectful. Well, what the, disrespectful to who? I mean, the enslaved people back then, they're dead. Or are we talking about people of color that descend from these people? Okay, I'm confused. All right, I looked it up on a Dutch website. The word slave is sensitive to some because hardly anyone chooses to be a slave. Okay, this is true. Nor is anyone literally born a slave. Literally born a slave, what does that mean? I mean, on a philosophical level, you can agree that we're all born free. On the moral level that we all should be born free, I agree of course, but if you look at how it happened back then, sadly enough, the child of someone who was a slave automatically became a slave of the owner and could be sold at any moment. No, a slave is made by another who has the power to do that. This happened to Africans during the period of the transatlantic slave trade and slavery. Within the context, our African fellow human beings have slowly become stereotyped. The black African became synonymous with slaves. But back then, well sure, but now, when I see a colored person walking on the street, I'm not like, oh, that is the descendant of a slave. But maybe, maybe because I'm a history teacher, I don't know. And that's not the only problem. I mean, what about slave market or slave ship? Should we then say enslaved ship or tot slaaf gemaakt schip, which literally means that the ship itself is being enslaved. Another objection which comes from the same website who gives pros and cons for the word use is the fact that in Dutch it kind of implies that the African was totally enslaved in body, mind and soul. But this surely wasn't the case. There are many examples of African resistance against their own fate. Right, this book, Spreek het Verleden, um, Speaking Past. So this book has a lot of text, so let's dive into it. All right, here's there's a full page on the transatlantic slave trade as well as the battle against it, abolitionism. It first talks about how slavery was common in most times, ranging from China to the Roman Empire. And while in Western Europe slavery disappeared, it remained in the Arabic world in Africa. It states that from the 16th to the 19th century, over 10 million Africans made the crossing to the Americas and that most of these were enslaved by fellow Africans. Let's see what it says about the Dutch. All right, responsible was the Dutch West India Company, the WIC. The Dutch shipped half a million slaves to America, which comes down to 5%. Okay, this was so low because the Dutch focused on the Dutch East Indies. So, you know, it is pretty short. It is to the point. And this book also doesn't elaborate on the life of a slave uh, once they were put to work on the plantation. And do notice here that this text I just elaborated on is inside a text box. So it basically isn't part of the main text and could therefore be 
skipped, so to say, unless the teacher uh, specifically says not to. Okay, about the Dutch Golden Age, um, this book speaks about the positive aspect like economic growth, innovation, art and science. And it basically states to the fact that the WIC founded colonies and had a part in the slave trade. So, yeah, although this book is, like, correct, it doesn't really elaborate on the human side of things. Especially on the fate of the non-European population during this era. The second book we have here is Phoenix. This is the book we issued this year for our pupils and is therefore the most recent one. Alright, chapter 7, paragraph 2, Slavery in the Colonies. Alright, there you have it. A whole paragraph dedicated to slavery. Here you see a text box with some numbers. This book mentions that 12.3 million Africans were transported, of which 10.5 arrived. Um, some more than the other book mentioned. It states the numbers that were transported to the area and the numbers of the Dutch share as the same as the previous book. It's actually good they mention these numbers. Alright, and here it says working conditions were poor and the plantation owners paid little attention to the safety of the slaves. Furthermore, and this is an interesting one, also free blacks and mulattoes, people with mixed backgrounds, they bought slaves if they could afford it, causing slavery to exist in all layers of colonial society. Oh, I honestly didn't know that. Wow, I'm actually learning here. Although it actually should be me who is teaching. Well, anyway. It speaks about slave revolts and how horrible they were suppressed by the Dutch. And this picture is shown where a slave is forced to carry out punishment for the rebellious slave. And in this text box, another example of an abuse is elaborated on. This paved the way for abolitionism and therefore the British abolished slavery in 1833. The Dutch did this 30 years later, it states. So yeah, I think this book does a better job than the previous book. Although it is still, yeah, somewhat short. And I don't really think this is because the makers do not want to elaborate on this. It's more like the fact that the Dutch history program for high school is very extensive. So you have to be to the point or else your books will be very big. Looking at the assignments, there's some interesting ones here. Here there's a part of a speech of a British professor who states that there is no such thing as a white or black vision on history because his mom was white and his dad was black. He says that we should all embrace the different perspectives. And the pupil is then asked what he or she thinks of this point. Pupils are encouraged to form their own opinion, which is good. Recent research showed the following. In secondary education, history pays a lot of attention to slavery and colonialism. The Historisch Newsblad draws this conclusion from an investigation into textbook for the subject of history. The teaching methods are not only give a lot of attention to colonialism and slavery, but they also encourage students to think about current issues such as racism and compensation for historical suffering. There you have it. In the end, the role of the teacher is very, very important. As I stated in a previous video, some teachers, they can gloss over it. Will they do this? I don't know. I don't. Now, some people today, they complain that when they were in high school, back in the day, they didn't learn about the Dutch slave trade. And therefore, the education system of today is wrong. Well, I have some counter arguments against this. First of all, memory is selective. Do you remember everything you learned from high school? Second, the education system is constantly evolving. So the education of 15 years ago, of 10 years ago, of 5 years ago was different than it was now. And teachers differ too. Like 5 to 10 years ago, there were much more older teachers. Teachers that have ever since retired. And I'm really overgeneralizing right here. But you can argue that older people have perhaps more conservative values. If this is true, right? If you can say that, okay, older teachers, they kind of gloss over it out of nationalist pride. I don't know. Even if this is true, we have a lot of aging at the moment in the Netherlands. So you see that more and more older teachers today are retiring. If you look at my school, I'm one of the most older history teachers there is. 
at the age of 33. None of us actually is above 40. And this here is a shout out to my history teacher when I was in school. And if he's watching this, which would be pretty epic, but I think, don't think he is. But if you're watching this, thank you very much because you shown me that piece of Amistad, the movie made by Steven Spielberg. And these images, they still linger in my mind till this day because an image says more than a thousand words. If you want to know more about Dutch textbooks that educate pupils about the history of the Indonesian War of Independence, you can click right here. And if you want to check out the previous video, the first installment about this topic, you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.